So I was having a bit of trouble with my laptop. It had actually broke. And since I'm a computer engineer and I know so much about IT, instead of me going to go buy another one, I just decided to just build another one. And so I'm gonna teach you guys how to build another laptop. This laptop here is actually the laptop that I built. My old laptop was a huge like HP and um, my daughter had this laptop shell, this notebook shell that was just laying around. And so I said, well, instead of me buying another one, I'm just going to rebuild this one. But everything that was on my old HP, I had to actually put onto a new drive. So basically, I had to buy a new drive and a dual docking station and some tools. My little toolkit I always give around. I had to put the old hard drive and the new hard drive into the docking station in order to clone what was on the old hard drive in order to get onto the new one. That Travel Star is actually uh, my new one that I bought. Oh my God, I can't even remember how much it was. I think it was like $40. Let's, let's say you don't have an old laptop. You just want to build one. So here's what you need to do. Make sure you understand what kind of laptop you want to begin with. And then you go find the kind of parts that you want. You need to choose a processor, a mobile processor, not a desktop processor. It's two different kinds. I usually get Intel. People say, you know, AMDs are less expensive, but to me it doesn't matter. Whatever is comfortable to you, I usually get Intel. If you want, you can get what's cheapest. But remember, you get what you pay for. Then you have to choose a notebook shell. I already had a notebook shell. Like I said, I had the Dell notebook shell. So I just used that. You also have to purchase some memory. It depends on what you do on your laptop that determines how much memory you need. Maybe four gigabytes, I wanna say. That's, that's good for like everyday performance. Four gigabytes, all right? You pick out a hard drive. You just saw that I got the Travel Star hard drive. You can get a standard or a 7200 RPM drive. It's up to you. A solid state drive, a SSD drive will be faster. So, so basically you should just get a SSD drive. If you get an SSD drive, it will not be physically damaged by impacts as much as a hard disk drive would. But whatever you do, make sure you get something that has enough space on it. Make sure that it's enough room on the hard drive or operating system. You know what an operating system is? It's it's basically like Windows 10, okay? If you're if you're cloning two hard drives like I was doing, I was taking information off of an old hard drive, putting it onto a new one. Don't think that the operating system that you're using on that old laptop is actually going to run well with your new laptop. It just depends on which one it is. Like I said, my former laptop was an HP. So the operating system was different. It was actually Vista, I think. And on the new Dell one, I think it was Windows 8 on there. So eventually me and daddy -O had to go ahead and get Windows 10 to even get the computer to even work right. You might wanna buy a battery, you know, like here. Like in the back, you know what I'm talking about? You might wanna buy another one, maybe. It just depends on what you want, you know what I mean? I didn't really need to go get a battery, but you can go to Batteries Plus and get another one. Um, like I said, I had tools. I had jeweler screwdrivers. They work pretty well because they're small. You kind of use your tools to be extremely small because the, nut, the nuts and screws and bolts and stuff on laptops are extremely small. So basically your tools are gonna be extremely little. So basically what I had to do was turn over the computer and the bottom was facing up. Because you have to assess the motherboard, there are removable plates in the back of the laptop. So you have to turn it over and like I said, the screws are really, really little. So I try to put the screws inside of my case so I won't lose them once I remove that panel because you, you would hate for your panel to kind of be falling off because you can't find the screws. Once you take those screws off, there is a whole nother set of screws that mount the hard drive in like this bracket. There's like this bracket um, with a couple of sh black strips on it that you need to put your hard drive in. But you have to unscrew the old hard drive if you're working on a shell. Like I said, I was working on a Dell shell. So I had to unscrew the old hard drive off of that bracket and then put on a new one. Once you put it into the bracket, you put put it back into the laptop, put it back into the bay, 
you remove the panel that's covering the motherboard. It's hard to move though. It's You want to be del delicate with all this stuff too because you can like really screw something up. But and once that panel is open, you will have access to the motherboards and the memory slots and you insert the memory chips. The memory sticks can only be installed in one direction, so don't force them. Also, you need to install the CPU. I kind of didn't have to do that because everything that would, like the CPU was already in there, the cooling fan was already in there, so I didn't have to um, do all of this extra stuff, so I'm not gonna get into detail about that because the Dell shell, the notebook shell, I already had this stuff. So basically I'm just telling you how to take stuff from one computer and put it into another one that's dead. Like you can take the inside parts out of a um, newer one and just replace some of the parts. That's that's basically what people are doing at the IT shop when you take them to the I, I, IT shop. Um, but like I said, once you put everything in and you close the panel and you set, you turn it on, you gotta install another operating system. Windows costs money and it's not very secure. Linux is free. I would suggest if you want a new operating system, get a Linux operating system. Um, it's more secure than Windows, but people use Windows more often. So if, matter of fact, if you're an everyday person and you're using everyday Windows stuff, scratch what I said about Linux and just go buy um, Windows. I know, I know, I hear you. If you, if you already have a CD and a key, you know, you need a key every time you put it in an operating system, then you could just use your old one. But I went, ahead, I went ahead and just bought the new Windows 10 for mine. So it actually worked out pretty well for me. You know, I, I really I really like it. It's been working fine. I'm actually gonna change the memory because I think I don't have enough memory on my laptop. So because I'm a computer engineer, I'm gonna start doing more IT tutorials. For those of you that think that that's boring, I'm sorry. But I just want to let everybody know what's inside of this head, okay? <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about IT, let me know, all right? Have vision and stay focused. Bye.